when we're working with rational functions, we often have asymptotes. An asymptote is a line that our graph will not cross, and that as a curve approaches it, it heads towards infinity. There are different types of asymptotes. There's horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, and oblique asymptotes. And I'm going to teach you how to find all three um, and where they come from. Let's look at the simplest rational function. This is the reciprocal function, which is y equals 1 over x. We see that x cannot equal 0, right? That value from our domain, right? Here's where x is 0. Um, and because x can never equal 0, my graph can never cross the line where x equals 0. This becomes our vertical asymptote. Well, one thing that's true is if I was to set y equal to 0, y could never equal 0 because I'm always going to be dividing 1 by some constant that's not equal to 0. So at the line y equals 0, I have a horizontal asymptote. My graph will never cross this line. And because the degree of this function is odd, right, the power unless x is 1, the graph um, is has opposite behavior. It's not the same. As opposed to this next function, which is the graph of y equals 1 over x squared, because it's even, our graph has the same, what they call end behavior, it's symmetrical. So just the same here, I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, because my denominator can never equal 0. 0 squared is 0, so this would be our vertical asymptote because 0 is excluded from my domain. And because um, if I square a negative number, um, it's always going to be positive. My y value can never be negative. So y is always going to be greater than 0, because it can never equal 0. And y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. So these are two fairly simple rational functions for us to take a look at. Um, let's look at some more complicated ones and how to find their asymptotes. So here are the laws for determining asymptotes. And you want to follow these step by step. So first, you want to check for vertical asymptotes. You find vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving for x, i.e., if x is excluded from your domain, it's a vertical asymptote. Next, you want to determine if there are other asymptotes. And you follow this, A, B, C's, but if you hit A, you don't have to move on. If you hit B, you don't have to move on because um, they're all different criteria. So in A, if the numerator has lesser degree than the denominator, then there's a horizontal asymptote at Y equals 0. We saw two horizontal asymptotes at Y equals 0. That was at Y equals 1 over X, where my numerator is degree 0 my denominator is degree 1, so my numerator has lesser degree than the denominator. And the same was true at y equals 1 over x squared, where my denominator had degree 2. My numerator had degree 0, and that's because it's a constant. But that's not going to be the case for everything. If I have a numerator and the denominator have the same degree, um, and the function is of this form, then the horizontal asymptote has the equation y equals a n over b n. You take the leading coefficients. So for example, if I had y equals 3x squared plus 1 over 2x squared plus 4x plus 1, it would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves because, sorry, it would have a vertical, oh yeah, horizontal, I said that right horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves because those are the leading coefficients and the numerator and denominator have the same degree. The last one involves us dividing polynomials, which I'm sure you are all huge fans of from chapter 4. Um, if the numerator of the is of degree exactly one more than the denominator, then there will be an oblique or slanted asymptote. And to find it, you divide the numerator by the denominator and disregard the remainder. So if I had something like y equals x squared 
minus 3x plus 12. No, I don't like that. Forty minus forty over. I'm not actually going to solve this problem. Over three x plus one because my numerator is of degree two and my denominator is of degree one. It's exactly one more than my denominator. It's going to have an oblique asymptote, and we'd find that by dividing. So let's work through some examples where we determine the asymptotes.